Yeah, yeah. We weren't catching anything, wow. you know? So, and then we went from zero to catching, you know, 500 a month or, you know, 600 <laughs> a month, you know, putting her in a circle with one rigger down and one squid chain and just never <laughs> stopping. Like, you got to be kidding me. This is crazy. It was like that. Yeah. It was yeah. truly like that. And how did it start out? Like, what was the origin story? Too much alcohol. Really? <laughs> okay. Because if God wanted us to have five glass boats, he would have given us five glass trees. It's, it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit as yeah. far as if I can remember uh -huh. correctly. Hey everybody, welcome back. State of Sport Fishing. I'm Anthony Pino with Hook Optics and the captain of the Blood Money out of Ocean City, Maryland. And today we have Anthony Mandillo from the Keenem Charters in Isla Mujeres. All right, Ant, how are you? Good to be here. The uh, Yeah, no, I've been here for for 25 years. I've had, I've had a keen M for 25 years and yeah, happy to be here chatting with you. And I, I remember when you were down here on that thing. Yeah. So it's been there a long have. time. So we did a couple of seasons and then we, we haven't been back. I'd love to go back on our new boat, but I mean, you've been there on the keen M uh, for, you said 25 years, but you're, you're not yeah. from, you're not from Islo, obviously. No, <laughs> no. I grew up in Rhode Island. I grew up in Rhode Island and I went to school there. And when I got done with my schooling, I moved to Florida and there I worked for Wink. A lot of guys know, mm -hmm. know Wink Doors backer. And, and we fished together on a, on a 43 Merit. And that's who brought me to Isla Maharis. So traveling with, with Wink and with that family. And consequently, that's how I got here. And I met my wife and Anyway, we dated for a while and traveling and back and forth and anyway, settled down here. I mean, 20, when you were, you and Wink were on the merit that Isla was like the end of the earth, you know, like, it, I mean, now, now guys do that in a half a day, but back when you guys did it, that was like a real, real crossing. <laughs> I'm tell, I am telling you, and uh, it, it was like going to the end of the world. Well, there was no cell phone. There was no sat phone. There was whiskey Oscar Mike on the sideband. And that's how I, I'd call home once a week to my parents just to tell them, you know, that everything was okay. And that was on a sideband. I mean, wow. it was, yeah, there wasn't even a, there was no international card phone, nothing. I yeah. mean, it was, yeah, we were out here, man. It was cool. I remember we were going, we would pick up our people across in Cancun mm -hmm. with the boat. And we would go and tie up at the Casa Maya. And some of the guys that would be listening or maybe would remember from then would remember the, the scam was to run in through the hotel and to try to steal the Miami Herald and bring it back. And that was a big happening. You'd bring the, you'd bring the newspaper back. And, uh, and I remember being with John Legrone and Will Dixon and all those guys. And, you'd, you know, you'd split up the, the newspaper, you know, and everybody would take a section. You know, that was a, wow. that, that was a big, that was big happenings, man. Yeah. So, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, I could only imagine, you know, I mean, I've always known it. You, the first thing when you're coming in, you always see the, the pyramid style, the big hotel there, but I mean, just, sure. to, just to show up there and just the, uh, just how quaint it must've been. And, and I, I, it's, it's almost a metropolis now just cause there's not, there's a lot of people living on a small Island, but it wasn't like that back then, was it? Nope, it wasn't like that. And the skyline, like you said, you know, that that hotel that you're talking about was the Presidente. And that's been here since the mid 60s. Oh, okay. so that was that was always part of coming here, you know, okay. seeing gotcha. that pyramid. Yeah, yeah. But the rest of it and now that's lost. You can't even pick it out of the skyline. You know, yeah, the yeah. skyline is so different, you know, coming in at night. All the ranges are different. You know, there's there's no more. There's so many lights. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's different. So you, you you grew up in Rhode Island, and is that where you started your fishing? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yep. I, I fished out of Point Judith. I fished with I fished on my dad's boat, and then I started fishing on some charter boats. Um, and and still, I, for me, 
that's always going to be home, that part of the world. Mm -hmm. I still go up, I fish in Cape Cod for a little bit in the summertime. And then I go up to Canada in the summertime, in the fall. Yeah. I own a home up there. I, I really enjoy going up there. That's a big part of my act. I like that very much. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah, it gets me out of here and things wind down. Anymore, things stay busy here pretty good. The hotel stays busy. We got we got that going on. Boats, the boats keep fishing. Yeah. People go fishing. Tell us about your, your operations. You know, you, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, you, you're – you're you're not the mayor, but you're close to the mayor of, of Isla Mujeres. <laughs> At least for the American boats, you know, going there if, if if there's something that's needed or you you want to understand the lay of the land, you're the guy to talk to, you know. I mean, but tell us about your operation there, the Keen the Keen M and the rest of the the rest of the boats in the hotel. So we got right now we got five boats, um, the Keen M, the Keen M two, the Lily and the andrea and now we have another andrea we're trying to work out one of the outboards um anyhow we've got two 41 footers and we've got three 34 footers um and we do whale sharks in the summertime our regular act for the sail fishing in the winter time and uh and this the, the white marlin fishing which is just getting going right now and then of course we're bottom fishing all year and that's a big part of our act. People love doing that. Yeah. Um, right at the dock, we've got the restaurant, which is the Ballyhoo. So you can come in, people catch their fish, they fillet it, they bring it up there to the restaurant. So it's sort of a one-stop shop. So that's nice. People like that. And then the hotel we built in 2000, um, we've got 44 rooms right on the beach. So you can come stay with us, fish with us, eat with us, do the whole thing. Incredible. And then, I mean, building that, that operation you have there, I mean, what is, what is doing business in, in Mexico, like for a a gringo, you know? You know, it's all, you're never, you're never um, a local, you're always different, but this place, the, the folks here have always been super, super welcoming, you know, in Spanish, it's a amable and they're, they're, they're super nice everybody's always been helpful you know and, and and my little world which is pretty small consists of the dock and whatever revolves around the dock and all of those guys they grew up in it you know mm-hmm. every guy that's been around me that works for us or works on our dock has been there since he was 10 you know literally 10 years old you know that i feel bad about that i feel like we're losing you know, and I don't know if that's a, a cell phone thing, an internet thing, uh, you know, but all the kids and stuff that there were, we're not having a lot of that. But to answer your question, I, I've had I've had great, great experience working here. A lot of paperwork. Yeah, a lot of pa- a lot of paperwork. But my wife fights with that. So that's, <laughs> you know, that keeps her entertained. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, um and then obviously Isla's known for the the winter sail fishing. Well, it was before that it was known for the it's the the spring, spring white marlin fishing. The spring or yeah. what you what you would call mixed bag fishing almost, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And and sure. um and then and then on later the 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 winter sail fishing. Can you tell me how that progression I mean, what what started people going there in the first place and then how it progressed from like that spring fishery, like I remember guys, even, you know, 15 years ago, they wouldn't even get back from Isla until like June, you know? That's right. So, that's right. But so um, for us, I mean, my, my experience, you know, growing up in the business was, you know, the boat you worked on, they either traveled to the Bahamas in the spring mm-hmm. or they came to Isla Maharis in the spring. The winter, we were home. We were in Palm Beach. We were in Jupiter, um, you know, fishing Fort Pierce tournaments, Stewart, all that. Mm-hmm. And then the springtime, you would come to Isla Maharis. You would get here in the, in March, and then you'd, you'd want to fish that April moon and the May moon. And those were big deals. And you'd, you'd end up catching your sails, 
you know, hoping to catch 10 or 15 sales a day, um, which we still try to do, you know, mm -hmm. our, these days, our fisher, our fishing has become a little diluted because I catch, you know, a handful of sales and then I immediately want to just go bottom fishing, you know, just, yeah. just cop out and that's enough of that. And we go do something else and go catch snappers or, you know, goof off. But, uh, you know, for me, like the Bahamas, I, I've only been once. I mean, it was a springtime thing. I, we never, it was never on the hit list. Yeah. Um, so it was always coming here. Anyhow, once I moved here for the first, I don't know, probably three years of having my charter boat here, we didn't catch very much um, in the wintertime. You know, we were king mackerel fishing. We were, we were just trying to survive it. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to build my business. And I had, I had there, you know, there were people that were fishing, you know, that w I would take fishing. Yeah. Anyhow, I think the three years, 96, 97, 98, 99, 98, we, we went out and we caught a zillion of them. I mean, I came home and I called every single person I knew. I called Marlin magazine. I called saltwater sportsman. I was out of my mind. <laughs> and, and we, we, we numbified them. I mean, we, did, we caught them. We caught them. Do nobody, you think no, nobody there? I mean, they showed up like, I mean, I would assume like you weren't running when you were, you know, starting your business, you weren't running, you know, up past Cantoy to go looking for fish. Do you think that they were always, always up there and they just kind of pushed it, you know, pu didn't push down? Even, even that above Cantoy dynamic, mm -hmm. you always have January, you know, mid-December and January, those fish are right out front. Mm -hmm. You can go, you can continually run the boat up to the north and you're going to run past them okay. those fish those fish are out front and and then it migrates and the progression of the fishery is that it moves that way i got you but it always seems to roll it starts right here so i don't i don't feel like we missed them mm -hmm. because we didn't catch them even a little bit i like nothing we, we, it wasn't like we caught one or two or three and you were like, oh, maybe it's better, you know, and you just keep drifting up the beach. Yeah, yeah. We didn't catch anything. I mean, I, I was catching king mackerel and we were fishing up in the mid thirties, yeah. you know, enough that you would have seen. I, I mean, I was paying attention. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the mid thirties for people yeah. who don't fish there is, I don't know what, 15 miles from the, the north side of. Yeah, uh, 15, yeah. 18 miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, far enough that you'd you'd get a hint, you'd get a sniff of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for you sure. You know, to know that you, you know, wow, you know, maybe we just need to keep rolling. Yeah. But yeah. We weren't catching anything. Wow. You know. So and then we went from zero to catching, you know, five hundred a month, or you know, six hundred <laughs> a month. You know, putting her in a circle with one rigger down and one squid chain and just never stop it <laughs> like you gotta be kidding me this is crazy it was like that yeah it was truly like that Just... so and uh, yeah and then so that you know that sort of started that whole thing you know like we called everybody we called the magazines we called chip we called every called everybody i knew just you know saying you know the, you gotta be here you, yeah. you know you need to do this who who were the first ones that from Chip Schaefer? Art was it Arch Thatcher one of them? Too? Yep. Arch yeah, yeah. Arch Arch came. Chip came. Mike Brady came. Yeah. You know all, all these guys that are you know Legends. phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was it they were they were among some of the first ones, and then you know within a year the rest of the guys followed through. Yeah. Do um, you think that was, I mean, you could almost like, I know that they were doing similar fishing in, 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 uh, Jupiter and Stewart Fort Fort Pierce and up on the East coast. But I mean, I always said, say that like, if there's a place that a mate needs to go to learn how to catch numbers of fish, the, you got to go to Isla. Like, do you think oh, yeah. that that was, do you think that was the time of, or an angler, do you think that was 
the pine, like the outset of like the dredge fishing and the light tackle fishing and stuff like that. I mean, I know that it, it was been doing maybe maybe not maybe not the outset, but maybe the the refining of what what, what is more familiar today. It, it absolutely was the onset of what you'd consider like speed fishing mm -hmm. you know that is for sure that you know but you know those guys like 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 wink like what we had going on what chip has going on dave berard mike all those guys and, and arch they they were all very capable and had it all mm -hmm. nothing in their spread from 20 years ago to today has really changed yeah yeah i mean they were they were pretty deadly. I mean, they might, you know, now just out of, you know, for one reason or another, they might clip more dredges to their stuff. Yeah, yeah. But pretty deadly. You know, yeah. they had their act together. But for sure, the the refining of, you know, catching two at a time, three at a time, and then doing it again, mm -hmm. and then again, and again, and again. Like that, that's, that came to pass here. Yeah. You know, for sure. Because... You know, you could catch the crap out of them in Fort Pierce, but you're never going to catch them like this. Yeah. Day in and day, you know, day in and yeah, day yeah. out of just knuckle bust and grinding through them. Yeah, I, I always thought that that was when we were starting the program, and I, I just started running the blood money. I'd, I'd done one season there on the Bill Fisher, and I really learned, really got to see how that 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 level of repetition for everybody involved the the captain, the the maids, the the anglers, the level of repetition and how a team could work together to catch, you know, there it could be God knows how many, but sure. you know, sure. but you know, in Ocean City, here where I'm from, like we take those same tactics, but we exploit them maybe two or three times a day if we're lucky. And, but with that that double or triple might might be the difference between having a a, a not great day and a and a and a solid and day compared spectacular to spectacular day, and, sure. You know, going to a place like that where it's not always calm, and you know, having having the ability to mess up and not mess up your entire day, you know, is a right. beautiful thing. And I think that sure. you know, I think that it's a great place for people to to go to learn how to fish. I really learned a lot in in the month that we fished 27 days 27 out of 33 days that we were there and we caught like i think 463 and and i i i could see my progression and my anticipation of you know the next step move very very quickly and i mean there's just not many places you can go from there and i think it just comes right. from you know that fishing and all those great fishing minds going over there and and just trying to not not for any ego purposes but just outfish each other you know what i mean yeah just to do yeah. well just to yeah, do it's well a, so. yeah it's a, it is an unbelievable field you know when when you're in mid-february or you know mid-january and all the boats are here i mean yeah. it's the best of the best and everybody's rolling i mean it's it's exciting you know yeah. i catapult out of bed i, I can't <laughs> wait to go and i and, I, and i'm in the slowest boat in the fleet and you know i am the i i gotta leave the earliest and i'm home the latest so i can yeah. tell you you know if you want to talk about how boats run i can tell you because i see them all they yeah. all blow by me <laughs> but, it's like you know but I, I got it timed okay i get there probably 20 minutes later than the fast boats so i i know right where i want to land yeah i can already see the the lay of the land i already got my, my the field is already set by the time i get to it so that's good but what, back to what you were saying about your you know the ability to fish here and not do well and and just shrug it off yeah, you know yeah. that's unbelievable i mean to today we we have a lot of people fish with us especially from ocean city that are like learning and they mm -hmm. want to learn and they want to refine because their their big fishing adventure, you know, where it all is on the table might be the white Marlin open or might be the mid Atlantic or, you know, and they really want to try. And, you know, as you know, if you want to win in those tournaments, you, you can't miss that's if you miss, you're done. You just yeah. sit down, go home, you're done. And here, you know, they can learn in backlash and then they can sit down and just tell them, relax, you know, have a soda, just chill out and 
there'll be another one in 10 minutes or 15 minutes or you know it's a great it's a great place for folks to learn yeah it's, so, yeah we like that yeah and i mean you're saying that you were on the slowest boat but you fish every day do you you, you still run the fish. kingdom almost every day or most days i i, I go every day yeah i mean and that's inc- my 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 every day is every day yeah it's not <laughs> It's not a sort of every day. It's, it's, <laughs> it's all of them. Yeah. yeah that's incredible. I, I, the, the fact, like, would you say you, you can't have pulled out of bed? I just think that's, that's incredible. And just to be, I mean, I've seen you out there just some, some not when I was there on, on our Viking, when I was, I mean, that was 10 years, 10, 8, eight 10 years ago when we were going there. I was 10 years, I was 24, 25. And, I'm like, man, it's yeah. fucking rough out there. All right, rough out here. And I'm a 24 year old kid. I'm not really feeling it in my body, but I'm yeah. looking over at you, and you're just charging, and you've been charging for 25 years. I love it. <laughs> oh man, we do keep going. Yeah, it's pretty funny, right? It was I was the youngest. I was the youngest one for a long time. Now I'm not yeah. the youngest one anymore. Yeah, but it's cool. No, man, I, I, I love it. I, I can't get enough of it. That's for sure. So is there anything in particular that keeps you coming back? Like, I mean, obviously it's your, your, it's how you make a living, but we, nobody has to make a living doing this. Like, is there like, it, it's just a feeling that, like it's yeah, just, you know, I mean, you, you know how it is. You get them on the flat line or something. I still scream like every one of them, the blue Marlin I flip <laughs> out, you know? And I, I think, I think, I think half of my repeat customers come back and anybody that's listening that's ever fished with me will know i mean i still i flip out i i just i love it you know if if i see them on the flat line or the pin pops or i flip out every one of a thousand times (laughs) it's just stupid and then but i mean the the magic of the bait ball fishing there like it can be it it can be it, it it'll get you dizzy i feel like i've I've been on (laughs) doing doing the wine and dump thing and and move, manipulating the boat around and next thing you know like you've caught 10 and 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 in and, and 35 40 minutes and you're just like what and then you get a minute and you're just like what just happened which way is home yeah. you know yeah. oh for sure <laughs> for sure i mean that that i mean there, there's nothing more fun than that right i mean and now i, I sort of not to be a snob about it but you know if they're biting great that's one thing but if they're really hard and you know and all you're doing is yelling at people and because you know you got to yell out wind up yeah, yeah. wind up drop it back and, you know and, and and then if it doesn't go well everything's in a big knot yeah so you know like oh but no the bait ball thing is wicked yeah so, the bait ball so thing is wicked to explain the people that might may have never done it in isla they, the the fish are on bait balls there's only a couple places where this is a consistent in the world a consistent thing and mag bay or you know cabo and mag bay is another one but in isla the sales they tend not to want to come off the bait ball you know right. after the first couple passes so what we would do is we we'd approach the bait ball the pile of birds frigate birds down low on the water and with sails and a bait ball and the sails under and you come up to ideally from down from heading up sea to the bait ball and you try to wheel wheel it around and you're only fishing two maybe three lines on the inside rigger everything else is cleared and you basically try to get your baits pulling through the bait ball and and either dropping it through or maybe you get one to peel off and eat a swimmer and uh try to hook hook fish like that when they start to get stubborn after the first couple passes it, it, that's pretty much yeah uh, it, has it changed at all have people refined it since i've been there nope it is exactly the same I got don't you. wheel around and your first pass you know when you first get there your first pass they haven't seen anything or they haven't yeah, yeah. seen a boat or they haven't seen a bait they jump you like you know like they not seen you and then you know you hopefully catch two or three or four or whatever and then your second pass is a little less and your third pass, unless they're wicked rafts, you know, yeah, yeah. they could be, you know, if it's a spot with 200 of them, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's going to, that's going to get good. But if, you know, if you, you find a spot and there's a half a dozen or there's 10, you know, you catch a few and then you sort of just carry on. And the, uh, you know, we started the dive thing. So a lot of folks that haven't, you know, if you're not following what we're talking about, 
the any of those images of that underwater bait ball and and the sails and that whole Basically, dynamic. if you've ever seen the the planet earth documentaries of the blue planet <laughs> and, and it, that yeah, is there that's yeah that's us. we did yeah, all yeah, that's yeah. us yeah. yeah that's us that's all yeah. we did all that we just we just reshot another another documentary is coming out with the bbc wow. and and we got some good stuff with them again and that was exciting. We had a we had some really really cool stuff. Incredible. But yeah, I never, you know, when I was I was going when that Planet Earth came out, and I, I was in college, and I'm like watching these sailfish, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like this is incredible. And then it was only a couple of years later, I was I was fucking there, and I was like, this yeah. is. I was like, I never, I even then, it was always my goal to to be there, but I never thought that it. And it took me a while to put two and two together, but when I did, I was like, I'm actually here where, where it's happening. You know, they're yeah, filming. It's, happen it's happening. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's happening. Just, it's just such yeah. a, a phenomenon that, I mean, I, there's, there's few things like it to see the sails balling. It's, yeah. it, you know, I, I've seen it when it's kind of calm and I've kind of, but when it's like, I don't know. There's it's kind of special you, it, when you go out there and you earn it when it's rough and, you oh, know, yeah. it's just a different element. And it, it, there's a different different energy about it when they're really biting and it's rough and the frigates are down low and you know you're looking yeah. around and everybody's kind of working their own bait ball and hooked up. It's it's oh, oh. Not, there's nothing better. And here we can supply rough. We can yeah. supply wind. <laughs> we got we have a special on it. We've got wind. We got rough. All you want, brother. We we sell it by the bucket. I have a that, that I get tired of. I don't get yeah. I don't get tired of the job or tired of the fishing. I get tired of that. Yeah. Just, you know, the, the the commute can be murder, you know, as you know. But even that anymore, I just just part of it. it. You just yeah. It's part of it. Yeah. Just yeah. buckle up and off you go. Yeah. Like, so, get get behind somebody in a big boot. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't even care anymore. I'd rather <laughs> not even spill my coffee. I just push her up to 10 knots and let her rip. Yeah. You know. Um so, I my I a friend of mine is i think he's going to be there next season on the he just got a captain's job on a 58 richie howe and he was all he loved i mean we talk he, he's been to costa rica and we you know we talk he talk about fishing you know he's like man i just wish i'd love like to go back to isla again and i was like man are you, are you sure that's a lot of like bonitas and and rough and and yeah. schools of jacks that'll just destroy everything <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> but but yeah. he's like yeah but man when you have a great day there you earn it you really you do. earn it you, you, you go out there and you earn it and it's good and you know yeah. you you've rigged your baits and you're still doing the natural dredge thing a lot of people there yeah. and you you go out there and you earn it and that's true it's it's a training ground for captains mates anglers photographers whoever like it, oh, it's yeah. a, for, for it's everybody a, it's it, like for your friend here you know you meet and for you you know you you, mm -hmm. you meet people I, i've met people from all over the place you know from from texas on up i mean you and you'd never have that interaction with crews and it always seems like and at least on our dock and and i'm i'm happy with our dock you know i'm yeah, yeah. i'm always favored to where we tie up it's it's you know it's old school. It's the yeah. old dock. It's where we all used to tie up. And for me, the camaraderie, and even with the other guys or whoever's in town, you have a camaraderie with these guys. You know, like you said, you talk to you talk to me on the radio, but we never met face to face. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you the amount of guys that I talk to that I could not even pick out of a crowd. <laughs> yeah. I, and you talk to them every day, like you're there, yeah. like you know, your best friends. You know, yeah, your yeah. fishing pals. And and it's a cool place for that, you know. It's 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 neat. Yeah, no, I, I, I can like... I can definitely say the vibe down there in Villa Vera. At least the years that I was there was incredible. I mean, some of the, some relationships I built on that dock. Yeah, uh, I think uh, on B dock and the floating dock in Villa Vera, I just and it's just they still sustain to this day. And like I see somebody I haven't seen in in two or three years and still get a big hug from them because of those yeah. those fun nights grilling on the dock and, and hanging out yeah. after after yeah. having a great day, man. It's yeah, yeah, it's it's a fun, it's a fun environment. And and part of it too is is like your buddy said, you know, to earn it. You know, and yeah. here there's no it's it's a grind. Yeah, yeah. It is a grind. It's not an easy fishery to 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 succeed in. Yeah. That's for sure.
yeah it's Anyhow. just it's just a training like it's just a training ground if you're a young mate and i just feel like it's a training ground but it's it's and it's competitive but everybody kind of lets their hair down a little bit versus their home ports because you get people you know you get people from the north mid-atlantic the northeast you get people from the gulf coast and florida and yeah. stuff like that and everybody's just a little bit more relaxed because it's you know you're nobody's really keeping score you know <laughs> so, yeah, that's right it's it's not nah, it's cool it's a cool place man so I, yep it, you got that and then um yeah i mean so we do got, that and then i go so we're talking about other stuff that we do after you know we used to slow down and we don't anymore you know we mm -hmm. stay going with the whale sharks um we're still fishing a little bit not the sexiest fishing in the world but you know we'll fish five hours the boats will go for six hour trips mm -hmm. and and they'll go do bottom fishing and snapper fishing and that kind of stuff um anyway and then come september i go up to cape cod and during COVID, i couldn't get into canada so i was fishing in cape cod for you know six weeks two months i was fishing up there on the hindsight um and anyway i still go up there and spend a little bit of time with him with brett on that rig because it's just fun yeah and uh we go do that in cape cod and i'll do two weeks there and then i'll go up to canada and spend the rest of the time at my house up there goofing off that's good how fun. i mean you do you you do you fish in canada obviously amongst other things yeah. so, and yeah you, they have a giant bluefin fishing there yep and yep it's yep. about as as epic as it can be it's about, about this, as epic. it's about the it's bluefin a, bluefin version of isla Mahara is pretty it much. is it is it is like two thousand <laughs> miles in the other direction yeah yeah, yeah the, the trick to being a successful fisherman i find a fish where they're the thickest yeah so that's that's a big trick Damn. so go, go to where they're this they're the can you most. tell us about that a little bit about um, fishing yeah there? i mean it's so I, I fish with the, I, I, I help out the, the Jacquards. They have a, they have a couple of boats up there and I, I bring them some guests mm -hmm. and, and they take care of it up there and, and they're doing the fishing. I'm doing a lot of the supervising and it's, it's just great fun. They put on a good act and it's a great environment. The fish are huge. Um, it pretty, it's a fabulous fishery. You know, like you said, it's, it's as good as it gets. Yeah. Um, and I've been working with those guys for a number of years. We do a bunch of tagging. Um, and like I said, I bring some guys up there. I introduce them to them and, and then they, they take the trips. So it works out well. Yeah, it works good for them. And like I said, I'm happy. I'm just happy to be there and not here. Get out of here for a little <laughs> bit. So it's good to get away. Living on an island, that's the only, the only thing. When you hit the wall, you, you got to go. Yeah. It's time to go. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I'm good for about nine months. I think that's and, fair. And, and yeah, nine months, and then you got to go. Yeah, I think so. most people, if they had it that way, whether they live on a on a picturesque like an island off the coast of Mexico or in, in downtown Manhattan, they would probably everybody, whether if they even loved it, they'd still like to be away a little bit, you know. Yeah, it's so. just nice. To, it's just yeah, time to go. Yeah. So, anyhow, it's good fun. So. so. And now what do you do with the blood money? Where's that thing go? We're in Ocean City. We've been in North Carolina all winter, kind of kind of laying low this winter. So we just do the Mid-Atlantic most years. So I'm I'm maybe maybe this will help my bosses maybe get the itch to go back to Isla, you know, that especially now that it seemed like fishing last season was 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 pretty solid, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, rock solid. Yeah. I mean right to the very end. Right right on to the March moon. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. The, the fish, we couldn't find any fish up above, and we found them out front here. Wow! And, and they were they were thick. Yeah. It was it was decent. Um, you know, it gets hectic when they're out front and they're on top because mm -hmm. we're trying. You know, we were trying to dive. Everybody's trying to fish. The local boats are going mental. I mean, it's <laughs> it's a whole. You know, you you got the buffet of crazy. <laughs> you know, you just. Throw it all in. Everybody's speaking a different language. Everybody's <laughs> going mental. Uh, I, I mean, that I'm happy for, and I'm glad that's good, and I'm glad it's over. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm happy to see it, and I'm happy to see it end. So, yeah. when and then 
do you guys do a lot of do you do any fishing down there at Aerosmith at all? I, I've only gone down there twice. You know, I, we I, I got a I got a, a new fellow working for us and he loves going there. Uh -huh. Um and he's actually he was on one of them one of them boats last year. They went out there and they caught a bunch of yellow fin, um, some really big Allisons, yeah, yeah. two hundred wow. pounders. And uh anyhow, I, I don't it's not my it's not my thing i've been yeah, out yeah. there a couple times but i i am not at all you'd think I, it's only 27 miles from mm -hmm. my patio right it's yeah I, I, it's just not my thing now i've been 57 miles the other direction uh, i can tell you about that uh, but that piece of bottom i don't have a lot of experience with gotcha. it's just yeah yeah, no, I've done some sword fishing out there. We caught a big sword out there one time, yeah. 600 pounds. What about the, the you did some Mako tagging yeah. years ago, right? We did. Uh, they get pretty thick there in the spring or in the summer? Right now. Right now? Right, yeah. right, literally right now is the time. And uh, yeah, we did some really cool stuff with Guy Harvey. Um, we had a bunch of, a, a bunch of work with University of Rhode Island, uh, University of Southeast Nova in Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. where we were putting these spot tags on them. And we were swimming with them. We were catching them, tagging them, pulling them in the boat. We, we quit the swimming with them because we didn't have a cage. Yeah. Then we, we put cages, we built cages, we put cranes. So I can, <laughs> I can have two cages that go on my boats, two cranes. They're all wired up with big winches. So we're, it's pretty cool. It, yeah. it, I thought it was going to be a little more marketable than it was. I mean, it, it's marketable to my friends because yeah. it's cool. But other than that, it, it didn't hit. We did all the, you know, all that tagging and we got it all done. I mean, we, we caught a hundred. That's wow. what the, the, the job was to catch like that. And, and we did. Um, anyhow, it, it was unbelievable. A hundred in um, a month? No, no. Oh, it took us six years. I got you. Over, you know, yeah, different yeah, yeah. trips. Yeah, but, I mean, we're catching the crap out. Yeah, yeah, big we're ones getting, too, right? Yeah, eh, two hundred pounders. Yeah, we had, awesome. we had the the biggest one we tagged. I think was four hundred, and then we had well, the biggest one that we swam with in the cage was over six. Wow, so that's a beast. that's a big one. Yeah. That's a big animal, yeah. and 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 that thing hung around for three hours. Wow. So yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. cool. So. Yeah, a cage thing. And you know, I've got it. <laughs> yeah. Got them all. Yeah. We and this is the first year that we didn't we didn't put any of them on the boats. We didn't book enough trips to do it. I got you. And usually last year I had a research project, so we did it for 15 days. Um, so this year we did not get that, so we're not doing it. So anyway, here here's a you remember the uh the enjoy mm -hmm. up there in, in Ocean City? Yeah, yeah. So I take care of a private boat for for a family from Houston, uh -huh. and they and we bought it. We bought that boat, so now I've got some. I've got the slowest boat in the fleet, and I run one of the quickest boats okay. in the fleet. That's a Garlington or, or the Revenge. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. the small one. Yeah, the 55. 54, 55, Yeah. 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 Yep. Cool. Yeah. So I got that nice. thing down here. Nice. So that's, yeah, state, that's gonna that's living there now. It's living here. Wow. Cool. Yep. Yep. So if we feel the need for speed, <laughs> I yeah, can go, do that. go up yeah. there and blast up to the to the zero. Yeah. Ocean, I always yeah. call that Ocean City Land because I it always just seemed to be me and a couple other guys from Ocean City up there. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. The, that that whole that's changed, right? That whole dynamic of you know feeling like the zeros were so far away, uh -huh. like the end of the world. Even for me, you know, in, in my in my boats. Yeah. We don't even start till you get there. Like wow. I don't even roll the curtain up this year. I didn't even. There were a couple of days we had, we had a couple of weeks where it was a little closer, mm -hmm. but we had a lot of fishing that was up above there. Yeah. And it was like that just part of the day. Here we go. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Was it worth the ride though? Like I mean, most typically, of the time, Good. most of the time, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I would say yes. So I yeah, think that's cool, that. Man. I think that that sometimes people, you know, you think about going to Isla and you're like, oh yeah, it's like a, you know, you go out there five, 15 miles and 
And, you know, there's just well, ball, bait balls everywhere. You yeah. know? <laughs> but sometimes now, it's not like that. So this year at the end, it was eight miles. Wow. We had, we had five, six, eight days where it was eight or nine miles yeah. was the action. But yeah, no, of course. And at this time of the year, you know, a lot of the fishing will be, you know, I'll start fishing usually on the edge, probably 16 mm -hmm. miles, 15 miles. So about for me, about a 50 minute run. Yeah. You know, plunk out and start my day. Yeah, it's cool. It's been a, it's been a great, great place to fish and fun place to have my boats. Yeah. So yeah, it's man. Incredible place. I'd, I don't know. I just could, I, I feel like I've spent a long time there, but it just never seems long enough. I just, if there's a place that I love like off the boat, there's, I don't think there's a better place for, for a crew off the boat than Isla. You can, you know, it, it'll make or break them. Yeah, that's true. You <laughs> can set, you can it'll make, set home. It'll make, you could get sent home. Yeah. This is the place for it. Yeah. This so. is the place for it. No, and you know, everybody you know these days right now the news everybody's all tore up about you know mexico being safe and mm -hmm. i i mean i live here and from my standpoint of seeing you know around here you yeah, know yeah. if you're coming here to fish or coming to this area to fish it's pretty safe yeah you but know? if you go if for people that might go there if you go looking for trouble you will find it it's not ah. hard <laughs> oh it's not hard no 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 and I, and I always look i tell all my guys you know nothing good happens after midnight yeah you know and if you're out yeah. looking for trouble you'll you'll find it well the problem yeah. is in isla there's like there's like a a little party that goes on and the sun goes down and then there's another party that start it doesn't even get going until midnight which kind of gotcha. which just kind of sucks so. yeah well that, that's the one you need to stay away from that's the one you just don't get involved in so um that's the same thing you know i mean it I was just talking to a buddy of mine. You know, you, you take a ride down Riviera Beach. You get you, you want trouble? You, get, you know, yeah. That, yeah. Might, but that might be the most dangerous, you know, one mile stretch from there to some of those boat yards that you yeah. never drive. You know, you yeah. don't want to be doing that at midnight. No, no. So, I've always I had a policy, a personal policy. If I was going to go out in Isla, I would drink till I'd go out with like fifty, fifty, eighty dollars, and I would. When when the money ran out, I went home. I to go home. <laughs> then the, nobody could mess with me. I'd just go home. I got nothing to take. Yeah, yeah I got, that, I got no more money. Yeah. Oh man. So. No, that's cool. So, so we got. So we start. Right now, we'll start trying to hopefully catch more white marlin and do that. And then we have all the local tournaments, mm -hmm. which are good fun. We never used to participate in any of that stuff, but they've gotten much bigger. Um, and, and that's a lot of fun fishing in those things. Now there'll be a hundred boats in them. Wow. You know, yeah, there might be, you know, some are pongas, some of them are, you know, smaller boats, a lot of center consoles, and then a lot of charter boats. Yeah. yeah. You know, all the Cozumel boats will come up here, all the Cancun boats. It's a big deal. It's that's a lot awesome. of fun. Yeah. It's fun. That's cool. Yeah, just good... super, just something for, you know, the, the, the area in general to get fired. The fishing It's community. a big yeah, yeah, it's a big yeah. thing for the community. A, a big deal. Yeah, the mayor goes out there. It's cool. Yeah, nice. it's cool stuff. Yeah, man. So, well, cool, man. I appreciate the time, Anthony, and finally, to, ah. finally, nice to meet you in person. Well, kind of in person, but um, I don't yeah. know. I might have to. I might have to light the fire under the the bosses and see. Maybe we could slide down there. Well, let me know. Call yeah. me. Let me know. I'll take care of you know whatever I can. Get, so. get very nostalgic talking about just like <laughs> like i said as far as the fishing and the off the off the boat and the town the way it is and the friendliness and the just the, it, there's a few places like it so man. no there's not yeah there's not many spots where you can you can have it all and, and it, you bring a family you know the boss can mm -hmm. go fishing the family can be on the beach they don't have to go on the boat yeah and they're safe you give them a golf cart and you know, a cooler and everybody's happy. Yeah. So, you know, it's a good, it's a good spot for that. So. Awesome. Well, cool. Thank you, sir. I, I can't thank you enough for the time and what you've, what you've built down there and, you know, I just got a lot of respect for just, just how, how far you, 
what you built for yourself and for the community at large down there, I think is really incredible. So I appreciate uh, it. It's, it's been good. Well, thank you so much for having me and I hope you have us again. Guys, if you need to go fish Isla, Keenum, it's easy enough to find yeah. just about it. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Yep, so. check us out. That'd be cool. great. All right, man. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right.